it's your favorite podcast. It's Bang On from Y'all. The Reckoning with Reasoning. With your host, Legendary G. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Vanguard from Yard, The Reckoning with Reasoning. I'm your host, Legendary G. So on this episode of Vanguard from Yard, we take a trip to Ghana virtually with Mark Beckford and Lakeisha Ford. Ghana, a country along the Gulf of Guinea and the Atlantic Ocean in the sub-region of West Africa. Ghana covers an area of over 238 square kilometers. That's about 92,000 square miles, with Jamaica being like what, 10,000 square kilometers and like what, 4,000 square miles. The diverse geography and rich ecosystem ranges from coastal savannas to tropical rainforest with over 31 million people yes that's 10 times jamaica's population ghana is the second most populous country in west africa after nigeria the capital and largest city is accra so ghana is considered to be one of africa's true success stories enjoying a stable democracy and booming economy bridging gaps in their social disparities which ultimately creates a joyous atmosphere for doing business. Ghana also has beautiful landscapes, rural areas, sunny beaches, rich and vibrant culture, welcoming people, exotic wildlife and historic and national treasures, which reminds me so much of Jamaica and I've never been to Ghana, but I'm planning to do so one day. But that's the kind of vibe and essence I'm getting from Mark Beckford and Lakeisha Ford, who are founders and advocates for connecting Jamaicans to the Ghanaian atmosphere. Through an event dubbed Pine and Ginger, geared towards merging the cultures while spreading awareness of the fertile ground for forming new relationships, giving us Jamaicans and the Caribbean an opportunity to collaborate with our brothers and sisters creatively. So join me while we discuss connecting the Jamaican diaspora with Ghana. And okay, with me today, I have Lakeisha Ford and Sir Mark Beckford. Yes, so let sir. Me just, yes, sir. So we'll be talking about connecting Ghana with the Jamaican diaspora and, well, the Caribbean at large, but, you know, we're zooming in on Jamaica. So Lakeisha Ford is a communication strategist who is passionate about connecting African businesses to global market and mobilizing public diplomacy in Africa. She has spent her professional life working in media and international relations, gaining experience from companies such as CNN International, Viacom Inc., m and Bank, United Nations Information Center, and the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Consular Affairs. Sir Mark Beckford, considers himself to be an avid Pan-Africanist, visiting and conducting business on the continent when he is not helping to power the Pine and Ginger event in Ghana. He works as a journalist. He has worked at Howard University as an assistant professor. He was a web producer at Kaiser Health News and a homepage producer at the Washington Post on the Universal News Desk, where he still works part-time. Thank you so much, Gavin. I appreciate that. Yes, man. Thanks for... Thanks yes. for having us. Yes, yes, man. Hey, I know the bios were kind of long, but you made it yeah. through. <laughs> yes, I made it through. <laughs> I made it through. All right. So, guys, I know I've read it in the bio, but I just want to hear from you guys. How, how did this movement started from then to now? Okay. So, there are a few movements in place. So, when you say movement, you mean like move to Ghana or Pine and Ginger? Yes, the, the, the connection between the, the movement two. To, the, the move to Ghana. And then from Ghana to the, trying to connect the, 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 the Caribbean diaspora with Ghana. So the movement to Ghana and then, you know, connecting Ghana to Jamaica and the Caribbean. The rest right, of the Caribbean. Right. Okay. Well, I will say we both have our individual and special stories on how we connected to the 
West African country of Ghana. Um, but I'll start with mine. Uh, mine started basically as an exchange program when I was under in undergrad. I um, went to Ghana for study abroad, and essentially that started my interest and passion for um, all things happening in Africa. Um, from there, I always said that I would go back, so I kept going back, and that basically reflects itself. This, like today, um, is me uh, starting a communications consultancy. Well, not even starting, because I started it like five, six years ago, but I run it now. Um, so I do a communications consultancy um, that supports local companies gain international exposure and international companies enter the African markets. And that is really all about wanting both the diaspora and the African continent to be better connected, for our stories to be better represented and for Africa to have a more wholesome representation in media. So that's my little contrib contrib contribution. I'm probably stuttering because the truth is it's not little, it's a big feat and it's something that, you know, should really be recognized as the future. And, you know, it's something that I saw, a vision that I, 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 I would say was called to be a part of. Um, so that's my labor of love now. I'm Jamaican, so obviously anywhere I go, I'm taking my culture. You don't, you know, take off your culture and hang it up at night. It's a part of you. And of course, being in Ghana, um, one of the things I recognize is that they love our culture. Anywhere in the world I go, people rate Jamaicans, just rate us, like they really love our culture. So um, that was something that I saw, and I saw that there wasn't enough in the Accra space that supported that interest or supported people's passion about Jamaican culture, music, our food. So obviously the entrepreneur in me, you know, which means you're a problem solver, was like, okay, well, we need to do better with um, providing more experiences. So I had the thought to really create a party, create a space where people can enjoy our music and our culture. Now, fast forward, 2018, Mark and I, we meet, and I think I'm going to let him talk a little bit more about that, but Pine and Ginger essentially was a merge, merging of, you know, what I just shared and um, some of Mark's, uh, you know, passions as well and ideas. And we met and put our heads together and really birthed Pine and Ginger as that space for people to enjoy our culture on the African continent. Um, I think I brushed through the story. That's the shortest I've probably told it in a long time, but that's essentially how the movements came to be. And I'll let Mark tell his and add a little bit more from anything that I, I missed out. Okay, Mark. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know if the term like um, destiny or, 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 you know, people use those serendipity you know those those words to describe how you make these connections um and, and and how things happen but you know sometimes you know gavin it's all about like time and place and where you are you know um so you know for me as a young adult you know um you know doing courses in my undergraduate courses i was always drawn to knowing more about like what my history was you know so i would always do those courses and learn about you know our ancestors and where they came from and always within me i was like you know what i have to visit if if there's any place that i visit before anywhere in the world i have to go to the continent before i go to europe you know and you know i was blessed you know to to my, my wife and i we said all right let's take a trip to see one of our um, friends who moved from New York to live in Ghana. She just, she, she was moving back home and, you know, we're like, we're not going to see her for a long time. So let's just, you know, go and take a trip, um, you know, link up, link up with her. So when I went there, it, the first time I go, I went more as a tourist and I was like, there's, Ghana reminds me so much of Jamaica. I call it a uh, genetic inheritance, you know, and genetic memory. 
But the first time I went, I went as a as what you call a tourist. And as a tourist, I didn't go out in the in the night. I just went to the cultural places. I went to the castles on the coast. So it was just like a, a learning experience. But when I was there, I was like, well, I have to do business on the continent. I can't call myself a Pan-Africanist and I don't do business on the continent. And I just was so overwhelmed by the similarities between Jamaica and Ghana that I said, you know what, I'm coming back and I'm going to do business on the continent. That was in 2017 when I went the first time. And then, um, you know, I was looking to do some research um, because I had to do that for, you know, when I was at Howard University, I had to do some research because I was on the tenure track. And I was blessed again that I was able to go with students this time to take students there to do what we call service learning. And in doing that, um, I took the students to, to, or, you know, I was a part of a group that took students to Ghana. And um, the thing is, I had to shop around these students out at night because they were, you know, young adults, they want to go out and experience the island. And then when I went to experience that stuff, I was like, yo, this reminds me so much of Jamaica nightlife, except Jamaican nightlife is a bit more expansive, but it reminded me of the similarities and it reminded me of the strengths that the Jamaican culture had. And incidentally, I don't know if you call it incidentally, I interviewed Lakeisha for one of my stories um, that was published about people from North America moving back to Ghana due to opportunities on the continent. You know, her energy, her um, vision really struck me so I did a very impromptu uh, research about the type of offerings that the, the Ghanaian uh, nightlife or cultural scene offered and I saw that there were some gaps and I approached her and she was thinking about this a long time ago way before I even thought about it so you know that's how I was like hey what do you think about doing this event and just getting it done and that was 2000, that was March 2018. And then eventually through, you know, technology and, and planning, we got it together. So it was really that fire that was within me about ensuring that, you know, let me make sure that I stick to my word about, you know, making a difference and impacting. And for me, business is not just about like, it's about solving a problem. It's about, you know, obviously trying to add wealth to my family, but this has a whole bigger purpose because it's about reconnecting and it's about connecting as well, you know, the different places that have so much in, in common. Indeed, indeed. And um, I like when you said genetic resemblance or genetic similarities. As, as, as a Jamaican, you may think that, yeah, going to Ghana, you probably feel weird because, you know, people them don't really know you, even though they are same black people, but, you know, you probably feel alien. So I'm happy that you guys, you know, have this experience and can share with the rest of the world and, and Jamaicans. What are some of the similarities? Like, let's zoom in on the similarities because, you know, Jamaicans listening to this are whenever, you know, put out them go, they more have to know, do we eat the same way? Do, do, do we, you know, go about certain things the same way? You know, what, what are some of the similarities? But once you touch down, um, Gavin, it's, first of all, the, the weather, it's hot like Jamaica. You know, look like some parts of Jamaica that you go to. You know, I let Lakeisha get into the food. For me, it's just like some <laughs> of the, the, the language, the, the, the words that are okay, similar yes. here, you know. So, and maybe I'm making this up, but like the word doppy, um, <laughs> that over there it's adope, but I don't adope. know. Maybe some guy okay. named, <laughs> after watching this, but, um, but just like s s small little things like that, the way we, you know, you don't see other people going... And over there, they don't use it the same way that we use. We kiss our teeth, but they kiss their, you know, they're like, they kiss their teeth. The buses, it's like they go to one bus university, one minibus university, because they all behave the same way, drive reckless, have tint on the, on the car, play loud music, hang out. So I'm like, all of them must go to the same university for like annoying minibus drivers, you know? 
um, or the way that they sing the, because you know when the, the loaders sing like half a tree, half a tree, or or ochi ochi, is this obviously I'm not understanding what they're saying, but they're singing the destination as well. So they'll be like, you know, in tree or whatever they'll be saying, um, kumasi kumasi, but it's the same sing song. So all those things you're, you're you're wondering, and then the last thing this I went to this place called Circle, which is like equivalent to downtown because i grew up in the in the urban in kingston and stuff and um it's the same it's the same how you have the vendors with their wares on the street i know people will say so why would i leave jamaica to go experience the same thing it's not entirely the same but it's very refreshing to see some of the similarities that that's well said so what about the food because you know we jamaicans we love the food you know so what about the food aspect of things good so there's a lot of cultural retention just point blank period essentially we come from there right in a very mixed up way as we know through history but ghana specifically the akan tribe which people know as the ashantis um, you know, we have direct lineage and I'm sure in our history, when I say oh, I'm talking about Jamaican history, we know about um, Nani, Kojo, those historical characters are, you know, direct descendants. They're essentially Akan people, right? So when we talk about, um, you know, having a, a dialect of English in Accra or in Ghana, there, there's pigeon, but of course we have patwa, and a lot of the, the words are very similar. Um, so they have words like pikin, and you know, we say pikni. Getting even down to the food, you talked about the food, which is very much a part of our culture. The types of foods that are grown there, there's aki. You know, we have breadfruit, they have aki. Um, we also have aki, of course. Um, Platin, of course, is just beloved. That's my favorite, by the way. Mango, a lot of the same similar fruits. The only one that I would say that I did not see is red fruit in Accra or in Ghana. Um, and then I feel like we have more, more fruits, like, you know, June plums, our star apple, the Jamaican apple. I don't see those in Ghana, but for the most part, the foods are very similar. Even how we have like green banana, they have something kind of similar to it, but it's actually in the family of the plantain, but like unripe plantain, but it's close to what we know as green banana. So those things are there. Now, how they do their food is very different, I would say, from us. You know, they do a lot of boiling down and a lot of mixing and a lot of stews. We do that too, but I would say not as much as our you know, people from Ghana and West Africa as a whole. The way they eat traditionally is with the right hand. You never eat with your left hand. I feel like we don't have we don't have that in Jamaica. Um, they eat with their hands, which is which is nice actually. When you think about it, you're taking something and you're like sopping it up and eating it. Um, people eat with spoons and forks as well, but traditionally, um, you use your right hand. You never use your left hand. That's considered bad manners, unclean and just out of order so yeah those are some comments that i can make about the food and sorry about the background but yes yeah man that's fine i i, I thought that's I, I saw some video with, with that you know eating with with their hands and stuff and i look at it and i said whoa it'll it show you how you know we are cultured differently and you know what we have as standard and versus places around the world Okay, so um, we touch on the food and, you know, some of the similarities. In terms of Ghana, I know you can't travel to Ghana without a visa, right? But what are some of the other amenities for Jamaicans and the Caribbean at large? Right, so for that one, at this time, I would say that's probably the most salient thing, like the most, uh, I would say, important thing. <laughs> um, other than the cultural similarities, the logistics of traveling to Ghana. One special thing about Jamaicans or even having a Jamaican passport is that you can travel Africa easier. I have an American passport and trust me, I go through so much stress trying to get a visa to go to Nigeria, to try to go here and there. But if you have a Jamaican passport, you can move through African countries way easier. Now, specifically talking about Ghana, you don't need a visa, you can go straight. When we worked with um, flying people from Jamaica to Ghana for Pine and Ginger, 
those times we had to get them a transit visa. But right now, um, Jamaicans can fly to Ghana without needing a visa. All right. So apart from you guys doing business in Ghana, are there any other Jamaicans in Ghana now capitalizing on the opportunities and doing business? Yeah. Yeah. There is a nice little group of us. And I say little because we're intimate, um, but it's growing. And it's interesting because honestly, you we hear about Marcus Garvey and Garveyites. You can find them in Ghana, like for real, Garveyites. Like I moved here because I'm, you know, of the philosophy of Marcus Garvey. And those are, you know, our elders. That's the older generation of, you know, older versions of, I, I would say, the me and the Marks. <laughs> they did it way before us. Um, some people went over in the 70s and the 80s. And, you know, they have their businesses, they have their ways of life. You know, it's very, I would say, more traditional. And, you know, they're, they're Rastas, of course. They're, a lot of them are Rastafarians. They live in the hills, they plant up their food, they cook, they sell. And, um, you know, they just, they live their life. And now going down the line in reference to age and generation, you have my generation and people who are a little bit older than me, you know, they have regular um, office jobs. They, you know, are literally integrated into the society. We had one of our elders, God rest her soul, she literally just passed away about a month ago, I think, or less than. Um, we call her Auntie Maisie. She is one of the pioneers of Jamaicans working and thriving in Ghana and um, she literally just passed away but uh, she's a you know a prime example for people like myself who are younger and who are coming in and want to you know do work or add to the business ecosystem um, so you now have the younger generation like people like me who are you know creating businesses and creating events and doing a lot of the connections um, from people who are frequent on Instagram. I'm sure you would have seen um, Kev, Kev Boy's, um reel about the difference or similarities between Ghanaians and Jamaicans. Um, he does a lot of content around that. You have Donna Ray. She's doing amazing work with um, the uh, ministry around tourism. And you have, um, you know, people like Makita. Makita is my co-host on um, Makita Powell. She's my co-host on Yard Abroad. And we talk about living and doing business in Accra, Ghana. Um, her and her husband, has, they've done some really amazing work in Accra and has definitely added to the event space ecosystem in Accra, Ghana. So these are some examples. I feel like I just gave you a little bit of a history lesson, but that's like literally <laughs> the community. And you see people like me who are up and coming, um, who are literally bringing in experiences and not just experiences, but also um, helping to provide jobs for, you know, people who are in the ecosystem in, in Accra. You know, we hire local D DJs. We hire people to literally service our events um, so that also opens up some of the connection and some of some opportunity for people who are in Ghana to work with Jamaicans and interact with the um, the experiences that we create okay beautiful all right so you know Mark Beckford Lakeisha Ford and uh, we're talking about connecting Ghana with the Jamaican diaspora and the Caribbean at large no I would love to zoom in and pine and Ginger, pine and talk to us about pine and ginger, how it started and what is the event used for? There, there is a demand for Jamaican culture there, Gavin. I, I think when you get to go, you'll see that Jamaicans are afforded special status in Ghana. What our ancestors and people before us, you know, obviously the greats such as you know Bob Marley, and then you know as we come down to to music from the 80s and the 90s and 2000s with dancehall culture, heavy dancehall culture and the impact that that has had. Um, as you know, Gavin, there is even is is a genre in Ghana called dancehall. You know, so for us. You know, we knew that that 
demand for the Jamaican culture was in the market. Even though in the beginning, you know, I was just thinking more of a general um, event, you know, Lakeisha like stressed that look, differentiator in the market will be making it Jamaican centered, making it Jamaican focused, right? And there's a, a team of us. So it's myself, um, Lakeisha, Godfrey Campbell, Bernard Kayede, and Selassie Fianor. And um, so it's five of us. And Lakeisha is, you know, she's the, uh, the point creative person. The point every person head bottle wash and cooker so she 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 said yo focus on the jamaican angle and we we took that we ran with it so in 2018 as i said after i did my very unscientific and informal market assessment and you know approached her approached um the rest of the members of the team to let's come together let's make it happen and through uh, Zoom calls, WhatsApp groups, getting our funds together, you know, bootstrapping it, self-funding, reaching out to all our contacts that we have um, throughout the industry, drawing on all the skills that we've learned throughout all our lives in, in communication, marketing, video editing, all of that stuff, working with you know, RD Studios in Jamaica to shoot our ads. We were able to put on the first event in 2018. Uh, got sponsorship from, I think it was, it was Patron. And it was, you know, for our first event, it went really well, you know. We learned a lot of lessons. There were a lot of successes. But for us, and I know I'm going into the logistics and, you know, like Isha can speak about the theme and the, the, the meaning behind it. But for us in 2018, it was a success to execute it. You know, people, you know, basically we came, you know, uh, maybe five days before. Obviously, a lot of planning went before because like Isha and uh, Selassie is on the, the ground. And, you know, but a lot of planning went into it. Come on, on the ground, ensuring that our marketing is tight, ensuring that the logistics are tight. And, you know, we did we did well enough in the first event that people wanted an encore, you know. And one thing I want to point out is that we also did it because, as you know, and you know, some of your audience will know, in 2019, Ghana launched what was called the Year of Return, which is an initiative to get people from the diaspora to... Uh, come and experience Ghana and eventually invest in Ghana. Um, and we knew that that was coming in 2019 through Lakeisha. And we said, hey, you know what? Let's position ourselves to take advantage of what will happen in 2019 and beyond. And, you know, it's all about timing. And, yeah, you know, sometimes when you hear stuff within you, you just have to act on it. You know, if you don't act and, and try and execute, then nothing will ha nothing will come of it. So it's been hard, hard work. Um, lots of hours, tears, you know, sweat, joy, laughter, little cussing here and there. But you know, we, we were able to, to pull it off. So that's the logistics of and the story behind the event. Uh, but it's all about like bringing Jamaica and Ghana together and the, the larger diaspora, um, Caribbean diaspora, Jamaican diaspora, because the numbers are there. We have a huge community around the world. And, you know, it's just for us to show that, hey, look, come and experience this, come and enjoy this. You know, come and find your synergy. And that's what we, we offer. Oh, great. Great. All right. So what, what are some of the, the successes of, of, of this event? Are you guys pleased um, fr since inception? When was the last event? I know you didn't keep any in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But talk to us about the success of the event itself. Is, as Mark stated, really doing it in the first place, the fact that we actually executed, I have to take a moment always and say, you know what, that's a big deal. Always say, you know, you do something and then you kind of move on. But it has not been easy executing it in the first place. Yeah, just to give you an idea, um, in March of 2018 and literally through WhatsApp and Zoom calls before Zoom was like a big deal during the pandemic. We were using it in 2018. We met in March and executed that event in December. Um, and we were able to pull that off. So that is one success. 
And then um, 2019 being one of the main year of return events and most specifically a Jamaican themed events. Um, there were no other Jamaican themed events that were a part of the lineup of um, year of return that were exclu that was exclusively Jamaican. That is one of our other successes. Um, and then because we literally, we, we labor at this, I would say every day, even if it's not something that's hard logistics, we're building relationships in order to um, develop the end experience. An example of that is when I came to Jamaica in 2019, I connected with a few entertainers, well, with one of the main entertainers, a um, uh, management group. And through that, during 2019's Pine and Ginger, we were able to have coffee come to our event which of course was a big deal for us, um, the fact that she would honor the invitation. But as people might see like, oh, well, she came, you know, that was months in the making. <laughs> that was months in the making and, you know, a seed that was planted a couple quarters before people show, saw her show up that day at Pine and Ginger. Um, so I would identify that as a success for us as well. The fact that we were able to have um, a Grammy Award uh, winning artist attend our event. Um, and, you know, we were only two years old at that time. And then on top of that, we consistently had Jules be one of our um, DJs. So it's just really, I would say, just having like high quality entertainment um, and for people who don't know Jules is one of the main um, and I would say leading um, Afrobeat producers that you know if you love Mr. Easy you have to thank Jules because he literally engineered his sound and contributed heavily to his crossover because of um, Jules's um, engineering. So Jules has been our, one of our main Afrobeats DJs on um, Pine and Ginger. So I consider that a success. And that's another example. I've known Jules since 2013, like before he was, you know, the big producer now when he was DJ Jules and just DJing only. And, you know, he used to send us um, his mixtapes and, um, you know, we would comment on it and just give feedback. So I've been a Jules fan since 2012, 2013. <laughs> and that relationship was, you know, in place. So when it was time for me to do Pine and Ginger, you know, he was like, Keish, it's you, like, let's, let's go. And just off the strength of, you know, connecting and me always supporting him, um, you know, he complied and, and supported us on Pine and Ginger. So. Um, that's another success. So, you know, we're still in the morning of Pine and Ginger, the beginning, but we're literally pulling together what we have and, you know, trying to do as much as possible. And another thing I will say is we increased exponentially in like the attendees. That was, that was big. Mark, I don't remember the specific number, but um, I would say we doubled our crowd the second time we did it. Um, doubled our crowd and we had some great experiences and, and individuals some parents attend our our event um, during the year of return. Well, I have to emphasize, Gavin, that we were one of the official events of year of return, meaning that we partnered with the Ghanaian government and was approved and sanctioned as one of the official events during that period, you know? And that in of itself was a major success coming from where we're coming from. And as like you just said, doubling or the, the attendees um, was a success. Our uh, DJ Franco from Jamaica, um, you know, your viewers will know Franco. Um, that's another success and that's building also on relationships that I had cultivated in Jamaica. Those were some of the successes. And for us, uh, Gavin, just people coming to us, we had people there from Ghana, people from Jamaica, people from uh, North America, people from Senegal, people, uh, and they come to us and they say, people from the UK and, they, and Canada, and people come to us and they say, hey, look, you know, we really had a great experience. You know, that most of all is that when people said the experience was really good, the environment was really good. That for us, you know, let us know that, hey, look, we're onto something and the, the quality that we execute at is worth it. 
and and for us we see ghana as the destination uh you know covid unfortunately put a pause on it and the fact that you know the event is paused wanes in comparison to <clears throat> the loss that covid has wrought um, on the world so you know we're very cognizant of that and grateful that we're still here and recognize you know uh, what people are going through and for us you know we we still see Ghana as one of the that will become the de facto destination for people in the diaspora to to holiday at and to enjoy their breaks at and for us it's just about continuing to build on that for the future most definitely and i and i i'm seeing more jamaicans visiting ghana and especially the, the caribbean because you both are, are giving us a, a pictorial of, of, of what ghana is like the similarities and stuff like that and i think it's very interesting very very interesting because especially jamaicans we need to have experience with our own we need to you know visit africa more we need to you know suck up some of that you know vibrancy i think the, the music you can sense that um just not just ghana but africa from the music there's this spiritual vibrancy that you're yearning for that's what i'm feeling coming from uh, especially ghana because i've worked with shatawale and um akisha mentioned jules i've been a advocate for Afrobeats about 10 or 11 years ago <laughs> been listening to some afro music you know going off on my own and doing my research and stuff like that so i'm definitely seeing more coming from from this movement i just want to commend you guys for doing what you're doing continue to do what you do it, it it's been a blessing and i know it's not easy i know it's not easy but you guys somehow pulled it off so oh, i do easy. have to commend you easy, i do right? have to commend you both you know so you know like i said i like when you know people move with purpose you know and are definitely sensing the purpose coming from you guys and i know jamaicans and a whole they will definitely warm up to the idea of you know taking a trip to ghana just to get some experience and you know just to see just have some different perspective on life you know just to see that yeah we have we have we own that well a welcome we and you know just a good vibration and a good vibe and we can come back home and tell we we had a friends and family and relatives and that said yeah you know we need, we, need, we need to take a trip to ghana you know so guys i'm definitely definitely on board with with the movement and anytime you need me on my platform it, it's right here so yeah, um no, but i mean that's that's good to hear you know um, yeah, I, mean, I appreciate that um, you know as you said uh, the music I don't even know how to like explain you know the, the, the similarities but once you hear I mean and as you know and this probably need a whole nother uh, segment on podcast but you know once you hear it it's like some just chip the memory just chip and you know the movement and you know like that that's you know nothing compares to, to to that feeling that you have and you can't explain it sometimes we interpret it in different ways like we'll say oh you know dance all them tech you know or you know but it's all one music it's all hip hip hip, hip hop reggaeton afro beats dance all reggae you know it's a, it's a baseline it's a movement and once you hear it you know it's undeniable you just you feel it and you, you start moving and the two of you guys way more versed in um in afro beats than, than i am because i took the, the my students would come to me and be like hey you need to listen and you know i just <laughs> for me it would be banter I was like i would say to one of my nigerian my students from nigerian lineage that nigeria is jamaica's son and she'd always dare me to tweet it and me as a recent convert like for me the music is 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 phenomenal and for me it's not it's not about competition I, as i said that's a whole nother thing but it's just like the synergies is the similarities and it's how we can you know feed off each other and grow yeah. and it's a numbers game it's a numbers game we never we never we didn't talk about it but it's a numbers game at this point yeah we're talking about hundreds of millions of people who look like us speak um like us have cultural retention and in the diaspora that technology has facilitated so yeah. it's just a numbers game and for us it's just we're playing our small running our small leg of a relay race uh, for drop our olympics um reference uh, we're running our small <laughs> leg of the, at a relay race and trying to you know add our contribution 
well the contribution is is noted and is admirable and i you know i can definitely attest to this you know back in 2018 when we when we, that that's when i said whoa you know mark mark really onto something here you know <laughs> you know so you know it's commendable and um i appreciate appreciate you guys doing this you know doing this for our people there's not many people standing up for our people and trying anything for our people so i truly truly appreciate the movement is there anything else you guys want to share with me <laughs> i could go on <laughs> okay can you hear me now loud and clear okay great so what gavin for seeing us and for taking the time to engage us on what we're committed um to which is of course connecting Jamaican culture with Ghanaian culture and literally the nations Jamaica and Ghana and the Caribbean at large and Africa at large um what i will say is you know pine and ginger is is in its beginning stage and we're hoping to expand and do more so of course if people are interested in collaborating they should definitely reach out to us um people can follow and connect with us on Instagram and across all social media platforms at pine x ginger that's p i n e x g i n j a and of course the j a is because of jamaica so anyway um connect with connect with us there um and then underlying that um you know we do have intentions of expanding our efforts from the entertainment space into trade um that's the bigger picture mark talked about numbers it being a numbers game you know africa is the future of markets so i would just also so i also want to leave people with the encouragement to consider africa and consider you know the um potential opportunities um of what you can do as it pertains to whatever literally whatever you you're thinking because the markets are you to do so that that means all right thank you lakisha thank you very much mark yeah, yeah you can go ahead. um when i when i interviewed um lakisha in 2018 for the story she said not everybody should come to africa but if you are interested you should try and come to africa and that's what um that's the encouragement i would give to people and it could be it can be a lifelong journey you know um travel will get cheaper and and it's is a is a goal that you can build towards and and there's so many ways to experience the culture you know so it doesn't it can be physically um, or it could be through tech and um yeah gavin we definitely appreciate the support and as um like you just said reach out to us you know um pine x ginger ig twitter facebook you know if I, i'm on linkedin um you can look me up like you share on linkedin you know you can or email is pine and ginger at gmail.com so p i n e n g i n j a so and you spell the word out and a n d at uh, gmail.com so you know if you want to collaborate or reach out to us um, you know feel free um feel free to do that so yeah we definitely appreciate this time gavin and uh, likewise here you know we're definitely supporting one guy from yard as well um, so yeah that's, that's, that's what's up Yes man big 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 things are going to happen with Vanguard from yeah <laughs> as you can see this is just the the beginning you know so i'm really you know doing this with purpose and um i'm trying to you know merge barriers and you know just like you know with Ghana and Jamaica I, i'm just trying to just you know share some positive you know uplifting things about you know what's taking place and you know like you said Vanguard is is just being on the cutting edge or being on the the coaching have new developments and stuff like that so you know i'm definitely on board with positive movements so i just want to thank you guys again thanks 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 i can't thank you enough for sharing this wonderful information with me and um you know i know my audience will really love some enriching information about you know how we can move from jamaica to a place like ghana and you know not just to have fun but you know see what we can what what's beer for us you know how we can trade or we can you know collaborate you know jamaicans and Ghanaians, or we can or we can come together and make things happen 
for the betterment of the future fundamentally the black race you know so guys thanks again and um i'll be definitely like i said you guys are always welcome so whenever there's some new other new developments the vanguard is here all right for sure, for sure. yeah man uh respect gavin bless up to your audience definitely and, um, yeah we'll definitely you know be in touch and always supporting for sure respect man respect every time mark right. so we'll keep in touch my brother all right man bless every time so that's it for this episode of vanguard from yard the reckoning with reasoning i'm your host legendary g see you next week don't forget to subscribe like share and comment let's grow this community why not